And when you were sitting on that block, you were just looking at deaths and people shot and stabbed. And if the ghost of all that could come out, you'd be suffocated. And can you hear the sound of hysteria? Where are the gay the baddest gang in the city? No. The subliminal mind fuck America. Gaylord is the last American street gang. I'll never be a fucking American pro American street gang. That's it. America and beer, man. And Gaylord. That's what it's about. Well, maybe I'm the faggot America. I'm not a part of a redneck agenda. Now everybody to the propaganda. No! Do it, boy! And sing along to the age of paranoia. My name is Anthony Ann Arena. They call me Johnny Boy. I grew up in uh, Grand and Agon area, Little Italy, Sicily, 1956. I was 16 years old. We played softball, 16-inch clincher. We were exactly 37 guys originally that grew up in the neighborhood strong. As time went by, we wound up with about 90. We still didn't have a club until 1958. Wound up on Euron. And no boat. My name is Anthony Butcher. Uh, my nickname was Butch. I was a gayler from uh, around 1975 to around 1985. Um, this place we're standing at right now, this corner is the motherland. This is the birth of, of the Gaylords. As a kid, um, I heard rumors, stories about this place. Uh, we looked up to the guys that started this club and we try to keep it honorable and loyal in our club. We needed to know what we wanted to call ourselves. Well, one of my combatties, my buddy, Bobby Shipball, he was my right-hand man in, uh, anywhere we went. And uh, he decided, uh, what about uh, the Gaylord? But in Italian, Gaylord is uh, it's a rough name. There's a lot of meanings for it. Uh, when you hear the gay, it's not gay, it's a Gaylord. It's, there's a different pronunciation, and it, it means strong, strength. We decided on what emblem. Okay, one guy came up, it wasn't bad. I didn't like it because it was the skull, the top hat, the cane, pair of gloves, and uh, snake eyes. Too hoodie-ish. At the time, we meant hoodie -ish. you're old. We decided on the cross. We liked the, the emblem, we had it designed and fixed and put on. Now the copper sold us. You gotta have a permit. Cost us eight bucks. Now I'm paying thirty-five dollars. They keep it up, so nobody can open the club. If I catch them, I close them down because they're not a gay lord. And anybody says they're a gay lord and they're from out of state, they're not a gay lord. They took over our name. And you ought to be shaming themselves because you got to be sworn in here. There's no jumping on anybody or anything. If you're in a working condition, you're in good health, and you don't like uh, uh, to play with young girls and funny shit, you're in. Everybody votes you. We like the guy. You come in a party. This is the way we operate. It. I get back here at this. Another sleepless night dismissed. It might take a day to get back and figure out what I missed. But I get back here at this. The knuckles white clenched in the fist. I might need a day to get back and figure out what I missed. But again, a lot of us were... A lot of us were kind of outcasts, you know. We weren't, we weren't the, the jocks. We weren't the, you know, in the, in the science club or anything like that. We didn't fit in with anyone. We sort of wound up finding each other, you know. And one thing about the Gaylord's rights was we were accepted. If you were American and you were going to fight for your neighborhood, yeah, you know, and it was just, it was and we just stuck, and we stuck together. together. We had parents that were concerned. Uh, the problem, again, goes back to a, a big battle uh, in, in our neighborhood. It was the Puerto Rican, they wouldn't speak English or try to. You, you were an American, you spoke English. And if you didn't like it, get your ass back where you came from. Very simple. One day, around 60, after the population was uh, building up in the neighborhood, I was cruising, a bunch of us. And uh, we got the word that one of our buddies was uh, in intensive care in the hospital. Eh. Well, what do you think? 
We all took off, maybe seven, eight cars. Henrotten Hospital by the Playboy Building on Michigan Avenue. That's where he had to go because his head was bashed in by some uh, supposedly nice Puerto Ricanos. And uh, we wanted to find out about it. The uh, police uh, couldn't make an effort. So we decided we'll make the effort. That's how it started. It's like a completely different demographic, you know? Their values were different and everything else. It was because how they were raised, you know? So they could come from up here from, Port from Puerto Rico, get off the boat here, and a lot of them, because they got here, they didn't have jobs or anything, they sign up for welfare right away, and next thing you know, you know, we looked at them as a bunch of welfare poems, and that was the problem. We met one of their leaders down on Milwaukee Avenue. That's where a lot of the uh, Puerto Ricans were uh, selling out in that area. They gave us the fingers and this and that. We, we, oh, and they brought, they were telling us that we were going to be uh, Latin kings coming from New York and uh, New York. The net of shit in Apple State. <laughs> New York, he was showing us all these signs, and we didn't quite catch it yet, you know, until one of the guys, you know what, maybe these guys ain't bullshitting. We better tighten up a little bit. Well, little did anybody know at the time, the brothers of, of the Gaylords had brothers, had cousins, and friends of them, cousins. So, meanwhile, we were doing all of this, having fun, and then starting to get a little serious. We had our teams joining in. Lord Asie from Palmer Street. Lord Paul out in We moved up here, started a section here called uh, St. Louis and Knockout, 1976. White power. Yeah, white gang. Uh, took care of our neighborhoods, kept them white. I grew up in Humboldt Park, so I was surrounded by Puerto Ricans. I actually took a bus to go hang out in a white neighborhood and help them keep it white. Come back to 61. That time, that time exactly, we were about 1,200 strong. It was on a Thursday at 8 o'clock in the evening. Every Puerto Rican car that was in the neighborhood was destroyed. At least 11 buildings were destroyed. People had enough, you know, and I'm still thinking because of that, the attitude of the Spanish people uh, have a hatred, but they don't understand what they were doing to us and getting away with it. And they were trying to control neighborhoods. You, you just don't step in the neighborhoods, and even this time, and try to take it over. Move in nicely, let the people know you like we knew each other, and it's great. We probably wouldn't have this uh, BS going on. Ralph Alvarez, alias known as Ra Ralphie G. Um, Almighty Imperial Gangster from Belvin and Drake. Pretty much gangbanging the Gay Lords. It was their neighborhood before, you know. Puerto Ricans started migrating to Logan Square. We started invading their neighborhood, you know. So you're going to defend, you're going to protect what's yours. You know, we had to fight to get ours. The misconception about uh, any so, at least our, our street gang, was that we're prejudiced. And that was a big misconception. It was a cultural difference. Uh, we were pro-American, and we had a problem with uh, another culture coming in and trying to take over our culture. What do they think? America was like a thousand people, and that was it? Like Puerto Rico, a little island? Now they're packed like sardines over there. Yeah, and here too. But the point is, we didn't do this. We tried to eliminate this. But that's why the pressure went down. And that's where I think the gang shit started. Right. We had Greek, Italian, Irish, uh, every nationality you can imagine. And the thing that united us was we all fought the same. It was a lifestyle difference. We're prejudiced against lifestyle. Now. You'll never see gay lords like there was in the 80s. Never. Especially we got, you know, with our name itself, we had a lot of problems with our name that we had to stand up with, with, with the whole gay thing. That was rough in itself. You know? yeah. Just being white in a Puerto Rican neighborhood wasn't enough. You know, we had to be gay lords and people thought that that was funny. Basically, we were just trying to hold down our ground, our neighborhood. You know, yeah, we did have a lot of problems with the Puerto Rican gang, but we weren't against the uh, Puerto Rican community as a whole. Actually, we respected them, but uh, they had a lot of gangs within them that were uh, 
that we fought against. They thought we were going to bring our guns, our drugs, you know, which eventually we did. The action, serious action started. You, uh, you, you, you believe me, we used to sit in our club and just pray that we could catch these son of a bitches. These, these knights, snipers, shooters that shoot children. You don't need no coppers. I'd break their fucking legs and put them in a wheelchair. And every time they get up in the morning, they look at their self. You don't have to kill a bastard like that. Cripple him for life and his hands so he'll never shoot again. Maybe the monkey see, monkey do. Won't do. Huh? I'm going to Chicago. We love you. We were defending what was America, what was what we believed, what was right. I got the right to walk on full of You know, that's what I fought. That's what I fought. The generations after me can walk on full of Avenue. This is what we're trying to protect. You look at the kids here playing out here back in the day, um, sometimes these kids would be afraid to play out here because the opposing gangs would be driving by shooting. These guys were bent on uh, taking away our culture and making them be, making us become what they what they were, and we weren't going to do it. So we're, we're fighting for our own culture, for our own pride. We were mixed in all these gangways. We had guns, bricks, bottles, bats, anything we had to get our hands on to get anybody coming through here. You know, somebody whistles down the block and we're in the opposition and we're going to move on them. We knocked out all the street lights and every night we just go at it with them. And we felt like that's what we had to do in order to keep the neighborhood. They were fighting to survive, so were we. Well, plain and simple. You know, the help of the major cave we were mostly partiers. You know, we really weren't fighters. And then, uh, you know, one day the Puerto Ricans came in and, and we were out. So I ended up going over to Palmer Street. And it was like day and night. Palmer Street was like walking into uh, you know, a flower child shit in San Francisco and going to Vietnam directly. I mean, we were constantly getting shot at. It's bad whether you're white, black, or fucking Spanish. They're youth on the streets of America. It's supposed to be the land of fucking hopes and dreams. We're fucking dying out there. Some of the stuff we would do it then would probably be considered hate crimes. Guns were a big part. You had the guys had to use guns to survive. In my neighborhood, I grew up boys in a bad neighborhood. It's kind of shitty now, but it wasn't terrible. But now, and I'm talking, I, I've been out of the gangs maybe 10 years, maybe a little bit less. The violence now, to me, is unbelievable. You don't even hear about a fist fight anymore yeah. or somebody getting hit with a bat. They Everybody just pulls out automatically, yeah. you got a gun. You know, there's, you know, that's what it is. It's just guys shooting each other. We did shootings all the time, I mean. We weren't as aggressive, we weren't as aggressive as the Spanish gangs coming in because we felt like, you know, a lot, of us, a lot of us were Catholic and we felt like, you know, it's a moral dilemma. We really want to go that far sometimes. You know, it was, it was a tough, it was, mentally it was a tough fucking bridge to cross. And once you went there, you didn't come back. What could we have done? What could the shit that's going on now is wrong. And I'm going to tell you and the people in L.A., you want to eliminate your gang shit? All these punks that know how to shoot sideways, put their ass in the front line in the United States Army, and we'll see how bad they are. Because I'm a Korean veteran. Let's see how bad they are. Or they'll be hanging on their mama's pants. That's not a gay lord. Shooting people and kids in the alley, sideways. Don't even know how to handle a gun. It was a little total different than, well, I wouldn't say a little, a lot totally different than the gangs of today, you know. Like I said, this is a West Side story. We would run them over with bats, you know, chains, or whatever you can find. Um, sure, everybody had their occasional pistol with them, but... I mean, it was not like... If we're fighting right now, one of us is going to die. One of us might get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt, you know. But you live to tell your story and to fight another day. It's not like today, where you got a 13-year-old punk, you don't know how to wipe the, you know, his ass, shooting down the street with a, you know, with a newsie, and killing in, uh, innocent bystanders. This place always reminded me of the Alamo, because of the church, and the way we were surrounded in by all the uh, Spanish-oriented uh, street gangs. Um, I've had friends that have been shot over there, Little Buzz was shot in the alley behind you. Uh, little Lord was shot over here, it's farther down the block. I had a friend who was beat right here and he's paralyzed for the rest of his life.
I lost a lot of good friends uh, because of all this. Um, myself, I was stabbed, uh, almost died on an operating table, and thought that would change my life at 17. It didn't. It made me harder, uh, more determined to get revenge, and I probably spent the next nine years trying to get that revenge. to, uh, you know, make people bleed for their neighborhood and themselves bleed for this neighborhood because uh, this is where they were had to fucking survive and live. This is where 14-year-old uh, spy fell to his death. He was shot in the head, in the back of the head, and died instantly. There's still some roses here that somebody left. This was a big, uh, this is a big spot that people used to come to and uh, reflect on, uh, on his death because, you know, he was so young and it hit the young guys really hard. Especially myself, because I was right next to him when he was killed. I lost, I lost a really good buddy, uh, you know, young blood, you know. Um, to this day, you know, um, he's still with me. He's one of my best friends in the whole wide world. I knew him since I was nine years old, and he died. Uh, and, and the ironic part was, where he was shot two months earlier, I was stabbed in the heart. I was just fresh out of the hospital. I still was wrapped up in band-aids, and. Um, we got, we got, I got stabbed in the order on that corner. He got shot on the order in that corner. I lived, he died. And, um, you know, sometimes I think maybe I was the one who was supposed to die. Um, but then I look at my kids and I look at my wife and I think that maybe I'm the one that was supposed to survive or maybe he would want me to survive and move on. But uh, it, it lays heavy on my, uh, on my head a lot. Um, I feel guilt, a lot of guilt that a uh, 17 year old didn't walk away and I walked away. And uh, it's hard to live with sometimes. You know, it comes to an end. You gotta grow up sooner or later. But, you know, you've tried to protect the neighborhood, but if you look at my neighborhood now, turn into shit with, with whores and junkies all over the place. But I try to tell some of the younger guys who want to get into this, it ain't worth it, because if you die, they're never gonna name a corner after you. They're not gonna change the street signs to say this is your corner. Um, am I ashamed of what I did? I don't think so. Um, I'm proud of what I did, but if I had the choice, I might have did it different. I'm a that city make people enjoyable you people stick together when you organize a club do it you'll like it money is not important all the time respect then love you can never love anybody until you respect them first Almighty Gaylord, love. Damn. You know it to love to the heart always Almighty Gaylord Geronimo rest in peace all them brothers rest in peace uptown sunny side of Magnolia Tiny Wilson Keith all of them brothers, little man, Palmer Street, Gaylords for life. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still the day. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the 